gave a hard day of work. The church grounds look beautiful. So thanks. <laughs> and um, Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday is coming. It's a wonderful time of celebration for the family of God. A lot of people will be looking somewhere to go to church for Easter Sunday. It's a wonderful time to invite people to living faith so we can share our faith and love for Jesus. Stay alert for special God opportunities in the next few weeks as God makes divine connections in our lives. The Silver Ring Ceremony, that is today, and we are celebrating with our, sorry, we are celebrating with the youth as they make a wonderful commitment to honor God with their entire lives for the Silver Ring Ceremony, and there's a reception after in the Fellowship Hall. Um, Family Worship Sunday is today, actually. It's today. It means that all everybody is in the sanctuary. Nobody like goes over to the other building. And Bible study fellowship groups. So they all meet tonight at the homes of Dan and Anna Roberts at 5 p.m. And Glenda Boswell at 6 p.m. And the Youth Bible Study Fellowship Group does not meet today. And Michael and Paula Cobb at 5.30 p.m. Um, the Ladies of Praise meeting is um, our next. It's coming up on Tuesday, April 4th. Um, the church work day. We have a church work day scheduled on Saturday, April 8th at 8 o'clock a.m. Mark your calendar. Come out and help around. Um, Volunteer Appreciation Sunday is on April 30th. We will be honoring our volunteers, and we are so appreciative of everything that everybody does and how we've invested in the kingdom of God at Living Faith. And so that's it. Yeah. The Bible Study Fellowship that meets at the Rock's House is going to be here at the church today. They'll see Okay. The Bible Study Fellowship that meets at the Roberts House is going to be at the church today. Oh, and I have one last announcement. Um, of recently, a family in Elm City lost their home in a fire, and they lost everything, and my student government at Elm City is collecting, we're doing a drive to get like clothes and basically everything. They lost everything in the fire, so if you would be so gracious as to get stuff for that, you can just give it to me next Sunday. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, that family she speaks of, um, one child goes to Elm City uh, Middle School where Abigail attends. The other one goes to Fife where Paula and I teach. Um, they, when she said they lost everything, they lost everything. They, they were renting an apartment or, or I think it was a house they were renting. They did not have renter's insurance. Um, the father's scheduled to have surgery soon because he was just diagnosed with a bone disease. Um, so he's out of work as well. So, I mean, they have literally lost everything. Um, I can help with the size. I'll try to, between Paula and I, we'll try to get some sizes and send it to you guys about what size they wear and, and all of that stuff. There's also a GoFundMe page that has been set up for them, and I'll send that out as well. Um, Abigail, you have to help me remember that again. <coughs> Okay, hello. I have a quick announcement about the food pantry. I know I haven't talked about this in a while, but we are running very low. Um, we are like completely out of pot parts and granola bars, and I'm not sure how that happened. Um, <laughs> but we need some more of that stuff. We also need those little bags of dried rice and beans. Those would be helpful. We have a plethora of peanut butter, so y'all don't have to get any more of that, but we have about two jars of jelly, so if y'all could donate some jelly, that would be great. We also need some box mac and cheese and the little Chef Boyardee cans or anything like a, the Walmart brand of that stuff is fine, just anything like that. Also canned meat. Um, we ran completely out of green beans as well, not sure how that happened either. Um, and anything else canned, like canned veggies, canned fruit, canned meat, canned anything would be great. So if it would be helpful, I can post this in the church Facebook group and send out an email so y'all can remember them. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right here. 
Rachel for just a second. Um, yeah, I want to stay right there. I've got to pray about something first. It's not Rachel, but she's going to stay right here while I pray. She's like my Linus blanket, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, um, I was going to say something, but I need to wait, and we need to pray about something first. Some of you will remember um, Kim Jernigan. He used to attend our church a long time ago. Miss Arlene Parker started bringing him. Um, well, his ex-wife was killed in a car accident, and she's the mother of his children, Lexi and Hunter. Lexi is about 17 or 18. She's supposed to graduate this year. She's supposed to go to prom. Hunter, this is what <laughs> um, Hunter is about 20. Um, I know he has a girlfriend. I'm not sure if he's working in college or anything like that. But anyway, those children need our prayers right now. That whole family does. Because that mother has just been ripped out of their lives unexpectedly. And so we need to pray for them. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that you comfort um, Tara Carter's family right now as only you can. God, at a time like this, there really are no words. We can only depend on you, and, find our, and they can only find their strength in you, God. And I thank you, God, that right now it's your presence that surrounds them and, and just wraps them in a cocoon of your love, God. I just thank you, God, that they feel your presence right now, God. And at this time of weakness, Lord, that they look to you. Father, if they need to cry, if they need to scream, if they need to get mad, help them to know that that's okay. That it's completely okay. Because I know those are the same feelings that your son Jesus had when he was on this earth. But I thank you, Lord, that through it all, that their eyes are on you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you do comfort them. And that you just bring them peace, God. That passes all understanding, the only peace that you can bring to them, God. I thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we wouldn't do you service if Miss Pamela didn't cry. For those of you who don't know that, that's just what I do, okay? All right, but somebody has to, right? But I always count Miss Clinton and J.D. to help me. So, when it's time to cry. But I have to... Um, make an announcement about Rachel, and she probably didn't know this was going to happen. And I've got a note on my phone that um, she didn't ask me to do this. I just decided to do. Thank you, Miss Abigail. See these children? This is so sweet. Okay. okay. Yes, I said children. Okay. <laughs> How many of you know that champions live differently? Yes. They do. And champions have a spirit of excellence about them that raises the standard of Jesus Christ. And I want to brag on one of our youth, who also happens to be my niece. So, okay, there's some things I can get away with. That was one of them. Okay. But I'm so proud of this young lady for many reasons. But this time... Is because Paula, who happens to be her um, FBLA advisor at school, took a team of young people to the State Leadership Conference in Greensboro this past weekend. And out of approximately 32 competitors, Rachel won third place in accounting for the state. Yeah. <laughs> but she loves math. I'm her math teacher. She cannot get away from her Mimi and her mama. Okay. All right. So anyway, she advances to the national competition, and she's going to Cali, as in California, A, California. And she's going, you're supposed to get real excited here. Okay. Anyway, and she's going to compete at the national level. That means Paula gets to go to Cali, too. <laughs> That's the reason why she, never mind. I'm just kidding. But not only that, but Rachel... Um, when the majority of vote for the state, um, sorry, for the Triangle East Regional Vice President at the FBLA oh, as well. Oh, oh, oh. And as Vice President, she holds the position on the North Carolina FBLA Executive Board, and she's going to help make decisions for the state chapter, um, and she will be hosting the regional competition that's going to be held at FIKE. 
in January, and she's going to need all of y'all to volunteer as judges, right? <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what FBLA is, it's Future Business Leaders of America. Okay? So, congratulations, Rachel. Yeah. to brag on two of our young people who I don't think they got here today because they're probably really, really tired from a tournament they had this weekend. But Kimmy and Nikki Vernelson, um, they, um, they, their volleyball team won the East Regional Division II volleyball tournament this weekend. Yes, and Sherry, their mother, happens to be their coach. So congratulations to her as well. Okay? And by the way, um, Glenda's Bible study group is not meeting tonight. <laughs> We're just plugging things in as we get them, okay? And the Cobbs are not meeting. I think the Roberts are the only ones, and they're meeting at the church, okay? In the youth, in the youth run, because the youth are not meeting tonight. Because we have a big day today. Their youth leaders are a little tired. <laughs> All right, so. Um, but I'm telling you, I love to brag on these young people. There's so many things that um, we can say about these young people. Because nowadays, so many young people, they just get a bad rep. They really do. Um, the millennials. <laughs> Everybody says the millennials are so terrible. And I'm looking at, at them, you know, I've got quite a few of them right here. And I'm like, what's terrible about them, you know? Um, even in my class at school, the good far outweighs the bad. It's just all y'all hear about sometimes is the bad. Um, but I'm telling you, they are a great bunch of young people. They're well worth the time that we take to honor them today and encourage them um, with services like this. Um, so with that said, I do want to welcome you to our Silver Ring Ceremony. And for those of you who are not familiar um, with this event, then you can find more information on the back of your Pretty Pink program. And if you didn't get a Pretty Pink program, then I'm sure we can get you one, okay? Um, when you go over to the fellowship hall today for the reception, and I hope everybody does because everyone is invited, we get to eat cake, y'all. We get dessert before lunch. And I mean, I'll tell you, that's God's plan right there, okay? All right, so when you go over there, you can see everything has been decorated real pretty with pink and silver. And we choose those colors for a reason. Um, the pink represents the Father's the father's tenderness over his children. Um, I already lost my place. There we go. Their innocence. Um, a youth's tender heart for Jesus. And the bridegroom's heart. And the silver represents redemption. The word of God. Freedom. Strength. Atonement. Divinity. Righteousness. And strength and faith. Wisdom and purity. Um, yesterday, several of us were out here decorating. Um, and I was here a little bit early because that's just how I am if you're... If you're on time, you're late, okay? <laughs> so that's kind of how I roll sometimes. But anyway, um, I was out here and I was thinking, man, you know, you go all out for something like this for our kids. We make this bigger than some birthdays. Um, you know, we make it just as big as a wedding. And then I thought, well, that's what we should do because really it is um, a wedding. You know, they're committing to Jesus. They're committing to, to making him their husband. Yes, guys, you have a husband, and his name is Jesus. Okay? Um, and, but, it, you know, it's a big coming-of-age celebration. It's one of the biggest events that they'll have in their lives next to salvation and baptism. Um, because not only are these youth affirming that they recognize Jesus as their Savior, but they are publicly acknowledging that they are beginning to recognize him as their Lord as well. And they're